Hello and welcome back to our lecture about the Falling Water House by Frank Lloyd Wright. We saw earlier the influences of, of the project, something about the design of the building, the process and the actual architectural aspects of it. Now this project is quite interesting and innovative in terms of its structure. Now, Wright is known for being daring with his cantilevering, his experiments, which we'll see later, for example, in the Guggenheim Museum. But here, particularly in the uh, Falling Water House, he tried some new uh, structural methods. And maybe we can learn more about it and, and how it relates to the design of the building. Right. So we see cantilevers all along. These are the most ambitious. So uh, again, we're talking about Falling Water, which is a Kaufman residence, a weekend house, 1935-36, outside of Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. And so let's see how he builds this. Here's the, uh, uh, the rock on which they picnicked. Here's more of the rock. And so Wright builds right into this. He uses field stone, which is quarried locally. And then uh, that gives him one of the um, uh, supporting members. And then three more in port and place concrete. Now, Right away, this is something that uh, mentioned another modern architect, Louis Kahn would not do, that why is this one poured in place concrete and this one is field stone? So, but anyway, Wright's not bothered by that. By that. So this gives us, uh, these piers give us uh, a base. And then on these piers are giant beams that cantilever outward and then we have fins coming across, and that's going to support the flooring. So there'll be a concrete deck and then uh, field stone on that for the floors. And then uh, we come up with uh, columns from there. It's going to support the upper decks. So here's our pier. Here's our giant concrete cantilevering beam, cantilevering out here. These are fins between the beams to support the floor, and then columns coming up and another cantilever for our upper deck. Now, cantilever. So a cantilever is like your arm sticking out. It's got support at your shoulder, and the rest is just hanging out there. So we've got to, it's got to be pretty strong. And we see its tendency to deflect. Now, in concrete, uh, this deflection is going to give us tension in the top part, and the tension in reinforced concrete is handled by the steel reinforcing bars. So we have steel reinforcing not only on the bottom, but on the top, and that's going to take this tension. So uh, the thing is built and very adventurous, look kind of scary, and so you know they take the, the scaffolding out, and we get deflection starts to tilt down a little bit, just a couple inches. That's totally normal. But it's understood how much that deflection is supposed to be, and it's not supposed to be more. And uh, it deflects a little bit too much. But you know, here we are uh, 50 years later, and there are tens of thousands of tourists coming every year. Everything's fine. But it's continued to deflect. And there famous for cracks opening up everywhere. They fill in the cracks. And then they said, well, let's measure this. So they put a, a pole here to measure the deflection. Unfortunately, the pole is sitting on the deck, so the pole deflects with it. And it's, so it's not showing, oh, everything's fine. Well, yeah, everything's fine, because your pole's deflecting along with the uh, base. So finally, the people in charge says, we better check this out. And they get a student to, a uh, graduate student, to do some work. And he said, maybe, you know, we better pull in some more serious engineers. So they get some more serious engineers. And <clears throat> well, I'll show you at the end, there's a wonderful video about this in a major article in Scientific American. But hmm. they use some very major modern techniques. Uh, first of all, that w w where are the rebars? Well, you can just go in there with right. an air hammer and, and look, but now you've destroyed the beam. So there are various magnetic and radar techniques that to, to tell you what's below the concrete. They're doing that. They're very precisely measuring, you know, 
deflection. Deflection, like a ten thousandth of an inch. Right. You know, they can very accurately monitor structures. Hmm. So they monitor it, and the conclusion is we got a problem. And then they so the the, the directors say, well, how much longer will it last? Has it been getting worse? I said, no, it could have fallen in the drink on day one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is like not right. We're, we're at a point where the steel is going, is stretching to a point where it doesn't stretch back, mm -hmm. doesn't spring back. So this is serious trouble. So how to fix it? Uh, and initially, well, <laughs> right away, let's put this under here. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So they put this, and well, you know, we'll set it in, no one will notice it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they can't have people, I mean, you know, this, this, this is like it could go at any minute, literally. So they put in this reinforcing and then they get to work. And so here is our, um, down here are our piers, here are our cantilevered beams, here are the fins going across, they support the concrete flooring, and then we put the field stone on top of that. So uh, what they do is, well, first of all, they got to take all this out. They remove all the field stones, and everyone is photographed, marked, numbered, and they haul them off to a temporary shed so they can put them back exactly where they came from. Then they air hammer out all the concrete. So now they've exposed these beams. And what they're going to do is they're going to put the reinforcing. Well, let's just jump ahead. Somebody left out those reinforcing bars on the top. Oh, right. <laughs> and uh, there are reinforcing bars there, but nowhere near enough. Hmm. And uh, there have been big squabbles between Wright and the client. The client brought in other engineers that said, you know, there's a problem here. And Wright said, if you don't trust me, I'm walking away. So very, you know, very stressful stuff going on. But they're going to post tension it. So what they're going to do is put these blocks in here and run very high strength steel cables over these blocks and then pull on them and that will pull this back up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, they can't pull it back level because the house is adjusted to its sagging uh, and they filled in all the cracks so it had nowhere to go if it comes up again. So all the cracks have been filled in. But what they can do is make sure it's not going to deflect anymore. So mm -hmm. that's what this post-tensioning does. So they put these blocks here, um, uh, epoxied into the existing beam. Uh, they then run this bar over a block and back here, and then they're going to tension it from here. So the big hydraulic jacks pulling on this here, and that's going to tension this thing up and provide the re reinforcing that should have been there with the steel was, inside. Was the renovation at the time of Frank Lloyd Wright or it was the No, this afterwards? is just a few years ago. Oh, so it's recent. Yeah, yeah, Wright had long been dead. So this gives a positive bending moment. It's going to pull it back up this way. So here they've uh, taken out the um, flagstone, they've taken out the uh, concrete slab, and they've exposed the beams. Uh, when they did that, they took out all the furniture. Here's that corner we saw before. Mm. So they've taken out all the furniture, and they did a lot of other renovation while, you know, while they were at it. Because mm. uh, it makes sense. So yeah. and so here's one of these beams. Here's the concrete that they added to lock in this cable uh, that's going to pull it back up. Mm. And these are the cables. And uh, it, these are pulled through here and with uh, hydraulic jacks to exactly the degree of tension that the engineer uh, has determined needs. So this got major write-ups. It's a really big story. Post-tension retrofitting maintains landmarks aesthetics. So it, there were big uh, committees to um, discuss and approve the engineer's proposals. and. Uh, it was, what was done is totally invisible. Hmm. So there, there's no change to the exterior, completely restored. You'd never know that there were post-tensioning cables in here. So the story I just told you is an excellent video. It's about an hour long, strongly recommend it. I don't see it on Amazon, but you can get it. Just search on it, um, Saving Falling Water uh, DVD. 
and the uh, a Frank, there's a Frank Lloyd Wright Museum that sells it. And it tells you this whole story. The engineer was uh, Robert Silman. He's done a, a lot of restorations of famous, uh, uh, famous landmarks. And he does an article, September 20, 1999, for Scientific American describing the whole process. So it's a real education in construction, engineering, and restoration mm. to uh, read that article and or uh, watch this, uh, watch this video. So what, is it, what does it mean that Wright made this mistake? You know, how does it affect our evaluation of him as an architect? This is something for our students to think about. You know? mm. does it, what does it mean if one of your buildings almost falls down? <laughs> And why did you think it happened? Was it because he was negligent about it and he just ignored the construction? They don't know. Uh, the um, uh, Silman points out, he says, this is not exotic. This is something any first year engineering student would know how to do. All right. Uh, you, you, have a, you have a beam, whether it's a, a span or a cantilever, you know where the, where the tension is and you, you calculate how many rebars you need. Uh, and he can only guess that they were engineers working within Wright's office, and the communication between the architects and the engineers broke down at some point. Mm. And uh, something didn't get communicated, and it didn't get in the drawings. And probably Wright was quite far away from Wisconsin to Pennsylvania, so he wasn't there for the construction. Um, well, he wasn't there for the construction. It was supervised by uh, some of his apprentices, and it's... Um, but exactly, you know, why that uh, error was made, hmm. you know, and, the, it, and it's a scholarly question. You look at what drawings is it in, what drawings is it not in, is it in the engineer's drawings, but it's not in Wright's drawings, uh, that, you know, that's still not fully answered. Hmm. Well, I'm glad they fixed it now, so we right. have some <laughs> of the masterpieces of modern architecture. Yeah, I wouldn't want that to be in the drink. Exactly. So uh, now, at the same time that Wright gets this Falling Water Commission to launch him back into the public imagination, he also gets a commission for the headquarters for Johnson Wax, uh, which is a household products company, and uh, we'll talk about that next. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs>